On this edition of Food for Life, from the Lift Jesus Higher Rally, Archbishop Thomas Collins. And it is only by a dying to our own ego sinfulness, and surrendering our life totally into the hands of our loving Savior. And then we will be fully alive through all eternity when we see him face to face. Some things are on the surface and some things are deep. The questions we face as we journey along. And one of the most deep questions, most profound, most central, is a simple one. What is life and what is death? The church calls us who have journeyed so far in this holy season to stop, and reflect, and ponder that deep question. What is life? What is death? We're introduced to that question at the very beginning of every Mass. When we hear the words, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. That speaks to us. And it tells us what is death. It is the death of sin within our hearts. It is what the, the apocalypse we hear of as the second death, the death which is internal, which we do not predict, but which we experience by our own actions and our rejection of the Lord, and which calls us, especially in this holy season, but always to repentance. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, free us from that hand of spiritual death, which is most profound. For that we can be freed from. Earthly death is another matter. It is the door through which we all pass. But internal death, spiritual death, we need not experience because of the loving mercy of the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and in that bring us to everlasting life. With our sins forgiven, bring us to everlasting life. We see in the, the gospel today a preliminary sketch of what all this is about. And the sadness which is in our hearts physical death, shared also by our Lord when his dear friend Lazarus died in this world. And he grieved and mourned for him, as do we all, in his humanity. Anyone who thinks that human, physical, natural death is, is nothing is simply fooling themselves. The Lord himself mourned for Lazarus. And the Lord performed a miracle to bring him back to physical life. What is death, what is life, it is the destiny of us all, and it is what we experience now in a natural way. But as with all of the miracles of our Lord, it points us to something much more profound, because the raising up of Lazarus is a sign of something much greater. All it means in itself is that Lazarus ended up having two funerals. Which is not in itself an important point. There's got to be more than that. For the everlasting life which the Lord gives to us when he says, I am the resurrection, I am the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is found in that deep and profound experience of our risen Lord. And this, the miracle of the mere freeing from human death, temporarily in the case of Lazarus, is just a sign to lead us deeper to a more profound reality, which we speak of at every Mass when we pray. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us not to the life that was given to Lazarus 
for a little bit of an extension, but bring us to everlasting life, to the life that comes from our risen Lord. That is our destiny and our goal in the plan of God. And the pathway to that is found through penitence, through a humble spirit and a repentant heart. We can die before we're dead and we can be alive, we will be alive after we're dead. Depends what you mean. For eternal life begins here in this world, in our earthly, brief earthly journey. It begins this resurrection, this experience of that as the Lord touches us day by day. It is experienced most profoundly until we see him face to face when we come together for the holy sacrifice of the Mass, where we begin with Lord have mercy, which is the pathway towards everlasting life, and which is brought to its fulfillment at this moment when we encounter the Lord of life in the Holy Eucharist. He who speaks to us in the gospel that brings us life, and he who comes to us himself, my Lord and my God, who leads us then back out into this world for whatever is left of our earthly journey, be it short or long, but not just to exist until we pass through that doorway, but to be fully alive as servants of the Lord, repentant in heart, loving in life, giving ourselves to the love of God and neighbor day by day. In that, we are alive, truly, and for all eternity. And then we are brought to that perfection when we see him face to face. We try, we try and try to draw a false life from all kinds of toys and baubles and useless enterprises. Those need to be stripped away by the words of repentance, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We need to be freed from that deeper death which is our own hardness of heart. Be open to receive the Lord. We come to realize how we are to spend our earthly life, our brief journey here, and it is only by a dying to our own ego and sinfulness and a surrendering our life totally into the hands of our loving Savior. And then we will be fully alive through all eternity when we see him face to face. But that life begins now. Always remember, hell can begin now when we implode into ourselves. Heaven begins now when we live with love as servants of the Lord, with a repentant heart and trust in his great mercy. And we're called to that experience every time we celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. For the words of sacred scripture that cut like a two-edged sword and strip away the illusions that blind us to what is life and what is death. And when we receive our blessed Lord who comes to us so that we can be alive, fully alive, receiving the gift that comes from the Lord himself and that is shown in our daily life by our actions of love and fidelity to our Savior. What is life? What is death? A lot of illusion about that. We can live too often in a fog. We need to think deeply, love truly, act rightly. And then we will know what is death and what is everlasting life. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Archbishop Thomas Collins, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Archbishop Thomas Collins. On the next edition of Food for Life, from the Catholic Charismatic Center in Houston, Texas, Father Mark Goring. Jesus is a completely different category of person. He had power to lay down his life and to take it up again. There were those who said, I see the way. 
There were those who said, I know the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I want to read to you an interesting passage from the prophet Isaiah. It's in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 7. And it's kind of a, a, a prophecy of what is to come, kind of a, a prophecy of, of heaven and, and when all things are, are, are fulfilled and, and all of that, of what we have to hope for. And, and the Lord says, through Isaiah, Isaiah says, And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples the veil that is spread over all the nations. There's this prophecy that whatever is veiling us, whatever is covering us, that's going to be lifted in, in the next life or, or, or when all is fulfilled. And a lot of, of, of saints and mystics have kind of alluded to this reality that in this life, there is a kind of a veil that does prevent us from seeing fully the fundamental reality of who we are and, and the reality that we find ourselves in. We do not see perfectly and clearly. And um, again, the Lord promises that he, he wants to, to lift this, that the day will come where we will see these things uh, clearly. Now, the truth is, though, is that the Lord already in this life wants us to, to have a glimpse or, or to come to a better uh, sight of the reality of, of who we are and, and uh, what the Lord uh, has for us. And so I just want to share like some of, some of these fundamental realities that so often you could even say we're blind to, that the, the, the veil just prevents us from seeing altogether. First of all, the reality, the simple reality, that God is good. Do you know that? Do you, do you see that? Do you see the goodness of your God? The reality that our God is an infinitely loving God who, who's pleased with us, who, who delights in us, who made us out of love for love, that our God is a good God. He's not a stern God. He's not a mean God. He's not a vengeful God. He is a good, infinitely loving God who wants, who wants the best uh, for us. Do we see that? Do we recognize that? Second reality is just the reality that life is fundamentally good. Yes, we have crosses. Yes, we do live in a world where light and darkness coexist. But ultimately, life is good. You know, the, the, we have so much to be grateful for in this life. You know, the very gift of life, the, ver the very reality that I'm alive and, and, and can enjoy this life, that, that's, that's awesome. And again, so often we don't, we don't see this. Third reality is a reality that every one of us is fundamentally blessed. You know, I love when I meet people and I ask, I ask them, how you doing? And their response is, I'm blessed. Have you ever met someone who says that? You know, you ask them, how you doing? They say, I'm blessed. I love that. I love it when a person recognizes that they're blessed. And sometimes it's people who are carrying very heavy crosses who recognize this the most, who are the first ones to say, I'm blessed. I might have a cross to carry. Things might be difficult in my life. But fundamentally and ultimately, I'm a blessed person. Again, these people, they see something. They see, a, they see this reality. And the truth is, is every one of us is blessed. You know, with, with so many things, you know, uh, um, those of us who have half-decent health, we're blessed. You know, those of us in, in, in this Western world who, who have um, half-decent resources, you know, good food to eat, a warm place to, to stay, friends, family, we're blessed. You know, those of us, those of us who have our parents who are still alive and we can spend time with them, what a blessing. Those of you who have children, you're blessed. You recognize that. And when the, and the list goes on, those of you who have access to education, those of you who have a car you can drive around and I don't know what, you know, a bicycle and parks to walk, we're blessed. We are fundamentally blessed. And if we don't see this, we're blind. Again, because of this veil. The third thing 
or the fourth thing, rather, is that we're loved. Do you know that you're loved? Isn't it awesome when you find out someone loves you? It just kind of lifts you up and makes you so happy. Well, every one of us is loved by a, by a God of love. He loves us. Isn't that awesome? Our, our God who made us, who's all loving, He loves us. Like, I'm loved. Do you know that you're loved? Do you, do you, do you, do you, are, are you in love with your God? And again, when we, when we recognize this, and, and the saints, they saw this. That's, so, that's why there was such a, a deep joy in their hearts. They knew that no matter what was going on in their life, they were loved, loved by God. And finally, number five, uh, we should recognize that we have an incomprehensible dignity. That as children of God, we've been made in God's own image. We are endowed with an immortal soul. We have, been, we have been redeemed in the blood of Jesus. The gates of heaven are open and Jesus has prepared for us a place in heaven where we are to spend all of eternity with Him. If only we would believe in Him and have faith in Him. We have an amazing dignity. Like, who are we that we should have a place for us in heaven to live there for all of eternity with God and with the angels and the saints? Like, who are we? We're children of God. That's who we are. We have an awesome dignity. And again, the veil prevents us from seeing how awesome our dignity is. And it has to be that way because if we saw how blessed we are and saw how great our dignity is, we would die for joy. The, the, the saints and mystics, they all say that. They say, if we really knew how blessed we are, how good God is, how great a hope we have in etern for eternity with God in heaven, if we knew that truly and fully, we'd die for joy. There has to be this, this veil because our bodies can't physically uh, contain the, the joy that would, we would have if we realized just how blessed we are and how awesome our dignity is. And the sad thing is that so often, rather than trying to open our, our hearts and our souls and our spirits and our minds to the great blessing in our life, we focus on the negative, or we focus on, you know, how miserable we are, you know? And, um, and I, I know even myself, in my own life, as I grow closer to God, the reality of how good God is, how blessed I am, how, how much hope there is for us as children of God, and all that, as I grow in this love for God, um, it, it becomes more, more clear to me just, just how, how, how real this is. And what happens with me is, you know, I find myself sometimes looking back in my life before I came to know the Lord. You know, I, I, and I think to myself, even then, the Lord was good to me. Even when I wasn't interested in God, He was still spoiling me. He was still blessing me beyond what I could comprehend. You know, and, and sometimes I'll have these, these memories you know, of, of a certain time in my life, before I knew the Lord, before I really loved the Lord, where I, where I realized God was loving me then. He was spoiling me. He was caring for me. I was still His son that He loved infinitely. And I remember one, I'll give you one example. When I was a teenager, my brother and myself, we bought new, new bicycles, new mountain bikes. And it was in the spring. And my family, my mom and dad, took our bikes, put them in the back of the car, and we went to a forest. And, and it was still a little wet from the snow melting, and my brother and I, we, were out, we went out mountain biking on our new bicycles. And I had a blue bicycle. That's my favorite color, you know. And it was just, just a beautiful day. I was with my mom and dad, new bicycles, with my brother, you know, good health. Everything, everything was wonderful. And I, I think to myself, like, <clears throat> at the time, I guess I took for granted just how blessed I was. And when yet the Lord's blessing was on me, His care was on me. And I look back with, and I kind of find myself repenting, you know, saying, Lord, I'm so sorry that I didn't recognize your goodness. And I'm so sorry, Lord, that I wasn't more grateful in those times just, just for you, you know, for how, for how good and how awesome uh, you are. Now, Scripture does challenge us to try to, to see these higher realities. From Colossians, for example, St. Paul says, If then you have been raised with Christ, and this is Colossians chapter 3, 
verse 1 and 2. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. You know, we get so caught up in petty details of this earthly life, and I know we have to be concerned about them at one level, but St. Paul tells us, set your mind, set your heart on things that are above. You know, think about how good your God is, how blessed you are, uh, how, how, your awesome dignity as a child of God, your destiny to spend eternity with God in heaven. And Jesus in, in uh, chapter in Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 15 and 16, Jesus says, for this, people's hearts, for this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are heavy of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should perceive with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn to me to heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And this is a constant recurring theme in Scripture, where the Lord says to us, He says, You have eyes, but you do not see. You have ears, but you do not hear. Like, I'm blessing you, I'm caring for you, I'm, I'm spoiling you. You don't see it, you don't hear it. You're complaining about petty things. You're getting caught up in, your, in yourself, you know, and, and not setting your hearts on things that are above. And again, the Lord commands us, open your eyes. And when Jesus was, would heal the blind, that was a sign of our spiritual blindness. Open your spiritual eyes that you may see. But you know, the reality is that some people, in, for some strange reason, they don't want to see the truth. They don't want to see the truth of how blessed they are. They don't want to see the truth that they have a loving God who, who, who loves them infinitely. They don't want to see the truth that they've been redeemed in the blood of Jesus and that the gates of heaven are open for them, that they can spend eternity with God. And they don't want to see that truth. And, and uh, the Gospel of John speaks about this. In chapter 3, verse 19, the evangelist John writes, And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And brothers and sisters, you know, sin is what blinds us the most. When we turn in on ourselves, when we, when we try to cling to things that are just going to drag us down, that we know are wrong, that we know are against God commandment, God's commandments, when we cling to those things, when we turn to those things, when we turn in on ourselves, it blinds us. It blinds us and we find ourselves in misery. Even though we're surrounded with blessing and grace and favor and goodness, we're immersed, we immerse ourselves in misery. And this is, this is what the Lord wants to call us out of. He wants to say to us, open your eyes, I love you. Open your eyes, I'm blessing you. Open your eyes, I I've died for you. The gates of heaven are open for you. Open your eyes, I want you to see. I want you to go through life with your eyes wide open. And so again, I'll read to you from Colossians. St. Paul says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above and not on things, uh, not on things that are on the earth. And so brothers and sisters in, in Christ, let the Lord touch your eyes that you may see. Let him touch your ears that you may hear how good the Lord is. We receive many prayer requests at Food for Life. Some people have been praying for many years for their loved ones for a certain situation. Others are facing a sudden, catastrophic, life-changing situation. So often I'm inspired by the faith of these people, by their trust in the Lord as they wait on Him. Trusting in the Lord can be quite a challenge. It's not always an easy thing to do. I myself am guilty at times of focusing on the problem at hand and becoming anxious rather than taking my focus off the problem, focusing on the Lord, trusting in Him, and experiencing His peace. But that's just what we need to do when we encounter a difficult situation. It's not easy to trust in the Lord, but that's what we need to do. And I don't say that lightly or flippantly, 
But anxiety is so counterproductive. I think of the words of Jesus in Luke 12, 25. Which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit to his span of life? So anxiety is just counterproductive for us. I remember a situation in my own life a number of years ago. It was a very stressful situation. I had gone beyond anxiety into fear. And I was sitting at home praying in my living room. And I was anxious, fearful, and then I was angry at myself for not trusting the Lord and experiencing His peace. And there's just all this turmoil. And I was just wishing and praying that I would get a word from the Lord, a word of comfort. And out of the blue, my eldest daughter came bursting into the room and said, Mommy, I just forgot. I had made something for you at school. Here it is. And she handed me a bookmark and ran off. And I looked at the bookmark, and it was a picture of Jesus. And the words below said, even when you are afraid, I am with you. And it was such a timely word for me and just what I needed to hear. The reality is, is that we do go through some anxiety and fear, if we're going to be completely honest. And Jesus is with us through the fear, through the anxiety. But he does not want us to remain there. He wants us to take our focus off the problem, which creates anxiety, and place our focus on him, trust in him, because he himself is our peace. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou dost keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. You know, God sees the big picture. We only see a little snippet, but he sees the beginning from the end. So when we lean our, on our insight, we can get very very confused. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding or insight. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. If there's something you're facing today and you need prayer and you need just some help just to trust in the Lord and receive His peace, please, we'd love to pray with you. We count it a privilege to pray with you for your prayer requests. And I leave you with these words from Philippians 4 and 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and He will keep your hearts and minds in perfect peace. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1394 and today's guest, Archbishop Thomas Collins. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. If every viewer gave a loony or a toonie each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. You may now make your donation online. Just go to our website at www.foodforlifetvministry.org and follow the link. On the next edition of Food for Life, from the Catholic Charismatic Center in Houston, Texas, Father Mark Goring. Jesus is a completely different category of person. He had power to lay down his life and to take it up again. There were those who said, I see the way. There were those who said, I know the way. Jesus said, I am the way. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Archbishop Thomas Collins, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Archbishop Thomas Collins.